sometimes we, and I, and I guess I should keep this personal, sometimes I forget about the impact that the experience that I've had has on how I see and how I respond to things. And I'm assuming that we could probably generalize that to everybody, not just in this room, but around the world. And we know the classic experiments from the past, Pavlov's dog. Pavlov wanted to create a rationale for what I call the conditioned response. Pavlov rang the bell, the dog salivated, and Pavlov gave the dog food. Although there are some of us who say that the, Pav the dog trained Pavlov, but that's neither here nor there. But thankfully, people can evolve from the conditional response if they spend time, if they have experience, and if they are able to conduct self-reflection. But there's still a small or maybe a larger aspect of conditioning for how we respond in the present. And that's wonderful for us as people of faith because thankfully God never gives up on us when we make mistakes because we get to try and try again. And our faith is something that evolves. There was a theologian from Canterbury by the name of St. Anselm, late 11th century, and he coined the phrase that describes the reality of our faith some, oh, whatever, 900 years later, faith-seeking understanding. The way that we live out our life is a way, a life of faith is one which seeks understanding about the things which are very difficult for us to understand, mostly because God is not us. Our imperfect faith gets more refined as we keep exploring for, listening to, and responding to what we perceive as God's call or direction. Anselm, all those years ago, realized that faith demands questioning and exercise to grow. It's not something which is simply set in how we grew up or how we learned to respond years ago, but how we experience God in the here and now and how we keep searching for God's new calling for us. The scripture that we hear today presents an example of this truth, especially when we think about our reading from Acts. Our story today is filled with people who have an evolving process in their faith. And the principles are important because we need to understand who they are in the greater economy that is the first century Judaism and first century Christianity. Tabitha, who is the principal in this one, no, not Peter, but Tabitha. She was devoted to good works and act of charity. She was one with a dis disposition to connect with and to relate to the people in her community in need. The widows, the marginalized people, the ones who had little. She was one who has the ability to find the possible in the improbable state of human relationships. Tabitha is recognized for her compassion. And as she passes away at her death today, we hear of one who was mourned because of who she was, not what she did. She was one who appears to have grown her faith in response to God's call and busted against the community's need. She was one who continued to evolve the way that she lived her life, always seeking a better understanding of God's presence and God's need in the other. And then we have Tabitha's friends. They called on Peter to come and save her. But I can't imagine what they really thought Peter would be able to do because she was dead. I imagine, like most of us, they hope for a miracle. We pray for miracles all the time. 
But I really believe that they really had no idea what they would receive from Peter if and when he actually shows up. But their faith was such that they knew God works for God's people with God's people. And they knew that there was something that could happen if Peter and they would believe and trust. And then again, there's Peter. Peter is the man who was continuing to grow his ministry in the marginalized communities, the Christians in Judaism, those who will be seen as marginalized, the centurions, those who are not Jews from the beginning. And Peter responds and calls to God knowing that God would respond. Peter responds to the call from the disciples, the friends of Tabitha, and listens to their call and responds to them, knowing that when he calls to God, God will respond. And of course, what happens? God responds. And the people in Joppa believed in the Lord. But then again, we don't know why. Maybe it's Tabitha's ministry. Maybe it's Peter's action. Maybe it's the friend's faith. But the important part for them and us is that they did not know exactly how it would happen, but they knew that God would be present in, the, in that moment because they trusted in God. The people in that story change, often simply by showing up. I'm not sure that Peter knew what exactly he would do when he got there. But when he did, he knew that God would show him the things that he needed to do. And the people in the story were changed by believing that something will happen that is, in fact, the next best thing for them. They, they meet God where they are because they expect to meet God in some manner. They meet God where they are already present in their lives and simply have their eyes open to God's presence. And this is our life of faith. And I will offer this reflection. Many of you know that I have been photographing things for most of the last two years, everything from very large animals to little bitty butterflies and things that are all around. And people have asked me, how do I find the little critters? And it's not because I know where they are. I find them because I expect to find something when I search for something. And that is exactly the story of our life as Christians and believers in the 20th century, 21st century. Like those first century Christians in this story from Acts, we have the same mission that they did. They listened for and responded to God's call, not always knowing exactly how that would play out in the end, but knowing that God being faithful would respond to their actions and their reactions. That we, and like they, needed to trust that God is calling us to do something that is efficient or effective in God's economy. And thankfully or not, we may not know what it, that thing that we need to do looks like, but we have been convinced and re refreshed and renewed by the knowledge that we must act like it is there, the call, because it is. We must respond as best we can and act like Peter, like those friends of Tabitha. They didn't know what they were going to get, but they knew they would get something. We need to act in the same way and believe that God will act through our responses to God's personal call to us. So how do we hone or change our conditioned response, that Pavlovian thing that we do? Well, we need to remember that God is present in us and in the opportunities that we sense in the world around us. And as we respond to God's call, even if it's not exactly as we expect to hear it or as we probably should respond to the call, 
that God will be present to walk with us and to lead us into a new direction. We need to react to our sense of God even when it doesn't match the past experience that we've had. Just because something has happened in the past does not mean that that same thing will happen in the future. We need to remember that the next best person or the next best thing will likely not be exactly like us or like what we've experienced. And we know that. Look around this room, me, the new people who are new to your community or newer to your community. Look at the new opportunities that God has presented us in the last 12 years. God isn't changed in all of the things that have happened in our past. But what changes along the line is that our perception of God and our perception of how God is calling us to minister in our world. The ongoing mission that we have is a series of calls and responses. God calls, we hear the call, we ponder what the call means, and we respond. And hopefully the response is whatever it's supposed to be. And in all honesty, God will make it work for God's own plan, no matter how we respond. The call that we will hear depends upon the community that is with us and the community that supports us and what we're looking for. The response that we offer today and always depends upon the call that we hear. And what we hear depends upon what we look for. The invitation that God gives us is to live a life that is looking for God in the here and now. Not just in the past. Not just in the future. But a new vital life being called individually by God to do God's work in the world now and forever. Amen.